Hi, hello everyone. This is Dr. Chirin Vivi Manike, Professor and Head of Data Science and Cyber Security Department, MLR Institute of Technology, Hyderabad. As part of data mining video lecture series, in this lecture, we are going to discuss uh, the different methods in outlier detection. Those are like a supervised, unsupervised, uh, semi-supervised, some statistical prox you know, proximity based and uh, clustering based methods. So we are not going to discuss in detail, I would like to give a pretty brief idea of each method as per the syllabus. So first we categorize the outlier detection methods, whether the sample of the data for analyzing is given with the domain expert provided the labels, that is uh, whether the data that is provided is having the labels or not. Uh, based on that, we would divide the uh, outlier detection methods into different categories. Second, we divide the methods into the groups according to their assumptions, that is regarding the normal object versus outliers. So we are going to make the basic assumptions based on that. Um, we are going to find, we are, we are going to use the outliers detections. So that is the second category. So here, the supervised methods. So supervised methods or models, models the data normality and abnormality because we are going, we are uh, supplying this labeled data. So domain experts examine and label a uh, sample of the underlying data. Like suppose, so if you take uh, the spam email, the spam filtering or the fraud messages or the whatever it could be, the domain expert should uh, examine that particular uh, data objects and they have to label that sample or the objects. So outlier detection can then be modeled as a classification problem because we are supplying this label like suppose the spam what are the sp uh, spam emails or the messages or the like that so we would label and we will train the models based on this data so that these would be considered as a classification problems so challenges to the supervised uh, outlier detection is mainly for example if there are two classes like normal objects versus outliers and they are imbalancing. The data is a imbalanced data point. That means in many outlier applications, uh, catching as many outliers as possible because we have. To, so in order to train the model up to, to expect the model to perform well uh, in identifying the outliers. So we must give the enough training to the data. That is in terms of uh, uh, the enough samples need to be supplied. But, but in the case of uh, normal, we, we will get the normal objects, most of the normal objects, but uh, outlier objects, very few objects. That's why there will be a huge uh, uh, data imbalance or the class imbalance. So that means in uh, many outlier detection application, catching as many outliers as possible, that is the sensitivity or the recall of outlier detection is far more important than mislabeling the normal objects as outliers. So unsupervised outlier detection methods make uh, an implicit assumption that is normal objects are somewhat clustered. And sometimes we could also use some like a resampling to, to make the uh, to make the duplicate sample so that uh, the data set would be the balanced. In other words, uh, an unsupervised outlier detection method expects the normal objects follow a pattern far more frequently than the outliers so whatever the this uh, outliers follows the pattern so based on that based on that we will uh, train the models so when some labeled normal objects are available so we can use them that is together with unlabeled objects that are close by to train the model for normal objects so the mode of normal objects then can be used to detect outliers those objects not fitting the model of normal objects are classified as a outliers. A small number of labeled outliers are uh, unlikely to represent all the possible outliers. Therefore, building a model for outlier, outliers based on only a few labeled outliers is unlikely to be effective because there is no enough data to train the models on this outliers. So to improve the quality of the outlier detection, we can get help from the models for normal objects learned from the unsupervised methods. Next one is a statistical methods like 
the effectiveness of a statistical methods highly depends on whether the assumptions made for the statistical model the hold true for the given data or not next category is a pro proximity based methods this proximity based methods mainly assumes that an object is an outlier if the nearest neighbor of the objects are far away in the feature space that is the proximity of the object to its neighbor significantly deviates from the proximity of uh, most of the other object to their neighbors in the same data set so the effectiveness of a proximity based methods relies heavily on the proximity or the distance measure used in some applications uh, such measures cannot be easily obtained more proximity based methods often have a difficulty in detecting the groups of outliers if the outliers are close to one another like uh, there are two major types of proximity based outlier detections namely the distance based and also the density based outlier detections so here you can see here and uh, these are the different clusters this is one cluster and this is uh, another cluster there are some other different uh, objects so the the proximity based uh, methods would be used based on the distance as well as the density here so clustering is another method that is used to detect the outliers that assumes that the normal data objects belong to the large and the dense clusters whereas outliers belongs to the small or the sparse clusters like uh, the previous or uh, in this case may not be clear or but if you go to the previous uh, here you can see here there are the the dense cluster like the c1 and c2 there are the two major clusters here and the other objects which are not belongs to any other cluster like object 1 and object 2 3 4 these are all would be considered as a outliers so thank you for watching the video